Very quickly, I just want to explain how this is used, how it's used. Uh, normally, if you are to set up sound system, you use your um, uh, mixer, connect it straight to maybe an EQ or um, a delay processor or a uh, compressor and all that. You know, so you have stacks of different different um, processors from the mixer down to those stacks of processors, then from processors down to the amplifier and of course the amplifier to the speaker. But um, when you have something like this, you won't need to buy the whole stack. You have all the processors embedded in one place. So, um, and that's why it's a little bit hard for you to navigate through something like this because you have so many processors and just few buttons for you to be able to access those processors. You know, so for, um, there are different types of speaker management systems, but um, I'm just going to give us a brief overview of um, the DBX260. There are many other scalers and the others in the market. So the DBX260 has um, embedded in it the complete equalization system. It also has um, you know delay, feedback, suppression, compressor, RTA. RTA simply means um, real-time analyzer. It analyzes your room and um, helps you to. It gives you an idea of the kind of EQ you will use for that for the room. Then your AGC and all the many many processors. But for this setup, what I used was um, graphic EQ. Of course, it also has parametric EQ. But for this setup, I made use of basically um, from the mixer straight to this, and the. Uh, processor I use here is just the graphic EQ. I did not use the parametric EQ. I did not use limiter. I didn't use gate. I didn't use um, all the many other processors. And the basic reason is this. Um, I just simply want to be able to um, I just want to be able to kill feedback frequencies you know, and the graphic EQ can help me do that, you know, effectively. And um, so, let me just quickly explain how it's used. Now, um, it comes with what, what they call programs. They call them different programs. Okay? But for this particular setup, I'm using program number 8. There are up to like 100 programs thereabouts. Okay, no, 50 programs in this particular one. Now, the reason why they have reloaded programs is for you to be able to, you know, quickly scroll to anyone that fits the kind of setup you want to do and then just use it instead of having to build your own program from scratch. You know, so about 50 preloaded ones. So I'm using program number eight because it's, it's uh, close to the kind of sound chain I want to run, okay? Now, um, if you look at it very well, you find out that this is the program name. And of course, this user, I'm going to change it to Grace Vine, and that will be later. Then um, this tells me that this is stereo with two delays, okay? We are not using delays because this, the venue is not very big. If it, the venue is very big, delay will be needed so that um, when the preacher is talking, the people in front and the people at the back will hear what they are saying at the same time. So we are not using delay processor because it's not a very, very big venue. Of course, we are going to be using that pretty soon because this place is going to you know, grow really, really big as soon as possible. All right. Now, um, I'm using the graphic EQ. And um, like I said, I'm using program 8 because it's closest to... Um, the kind of setup I want to use. Now I'm going to scroll through some few other programs so that you understand what I mean when I say uh, it's it's closest to the kind of setup I want to do. If you notice, this M means mixer, GEQ means um, graphic equalizer, which I'm using of course. Then um, this G means gate. And what does gate simply do? Um, many times when you're using your microphone and then um, uh, maybe the fan there's a fan close to the microphone. Of course, people um, on the stage or something might need a fan, but when the fan blows into the microphone, you keep hearing that noise. So you, what you do with the gate is you, um, what you do with the gate is you set a particular threshold that, okay, if the sound doesn't get beyond social threshold, don't open. So the name gate already, already even tells you what it does. It will open when sound reaches a particular um, volume level. So you see, if the sound level does not go beyond a particular level, 
it will not allow sound to pass through the microphones and that's what the gate does we have compressor also compressor does nearly like an opposite of what gate does compressor will help you to keep it at a particular level regardless of the nuances and the um, um, rise and fall of all the sound um, signals then we also have delay i've explained that P means parametric EQ, L means limiter, we are not using all of that. D means, um, what's with that D again, delay. Uh -huh. We are not using all of that. So if you notice, I I disengage them there. Now, if you see for GEQ, if you, if you notice, we have from mixer entering into the first channel, also mixer entering to the second channel, A and B inside it tells you um, the signal chain, how it's moving. So from channel 1, channel 1 collects, uh, corresponds to A, channel 2 corresponds to B, okay? And if you see channel A, channel A, channel A is routed to output 1, 2. Channel B is routed to output 3 and 4. That simply, looking at this alone tells you how your sound chain moves right from the input to the output. So let me scroll through other programs so that you have an idea of what I'm saying when I say it has different programs and all that. You see, okay, for example, for program four now, you see this is your mixer, PEQ. Now, PEQ means parametric EQ, which we are not using in this case. Then you see that this is the sound chain, how it moves from, from your input down to the output. But we are not using program four. This is program three. Okay, you see that program three starts with graphic EQ. But this graphic EQ for this one, what this means is it is combining channel one and channel two. It's combining channel one and channel two. So whatever is happening in channel one will reflect in channel two. But if you notice for program eight that I'm using, I've already separated them. The reason is I want two different sound chain to go to the front of house and one, another, different mix to go to the monitors that's why i separated them here and there are other there, there are ways you do the separation if you want to say let me go to program four for example okay three program three now um assume i want to separate the graphic eq so it won't be um uh, linked so that one and two won't be linked what i simply do is i come to input output Okay, because I've not loaded it, we'll not be able to access all those different functions. But you go to input output, it shows you where you can link and unlink channel one and channel two and all that. So, but channel eight is what I'm using, and I've unlinked the two of them. Reason, I want to use two different um, settings for channel one and channel two. I think this just is a brief overview of how this works and how I, you know, set up this particular. Um, system here and it's doing quite a nice job another beautiful thing this thing did for me was um when we put it on the first time i could hear some white noise some hissing noise so that was what i i i was able to use the graphic eq to reduce it to the barest minimum and how did i do that i, I go to eq already from the hissing noise i'm hearing it's called white noise um i know that it will have been at the high frequencies so what I just did was I went to I went to around um, 16 kilohertz, but I think where where the thing came from actually is 12 kilohertz because if I increase this now, you start hearing the white noise. You understand? So I used this to suppress it. If you notice, it's nearly out of the way. Well, uh, I'll quickly state this: white noise is is not abnormal. Electronic systems come with their certain level of noise, you understand. Um, but what we try to do in electronics is we try to reduce, especially in audio, we try to reduce the signal, you know, compared to the noise you get. So if your signal is way louder than the noise, then noise is negligible. It means that you are good to go. So um, the white noise I could hear, like I said, I located it at 12.5 um, kilohertz and I was able to drop it, you know, and it disappeared. So this is basically what I just did and um, I hope you've learned something from what I said. Thank you very much.